Here's a little Christmas special. Happy Merry Christmas Eve Eve. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. Uh, for those of you who celebrate, uh, I'm going to do this special thing. I got red wine. I don't drink it, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook with it. So there's this experiment that I'm going to try. Making uh, beef. It's a pound of my... My favorite beef here. And uh, I'm gonna do almost like a, a red wine gravy over some uh, some noodles. My father, one day I, come, I came home from college and I was starving, he, my father, he could blow all of us away when it comes to cooking when he puts his mind to it. Uh, he's He doesn't like to cook. Uh, he would rather uh, clean the oven then cook. That's why he never got into the restaurant business. Unlike my grandparents who ran a pizzeria. However, when he puts his mind to it, and he actually enjoys what he's doing. He blows us all away. He, he can actually outcook my mother uh, in an amazing way. So he did this dish and I, I, to this day, I can't, he doesn't remember even doing this. It was steak with a, with the a red wine gravy over macaroni. Knowing my father, he doesn't do a roux for gravy, but I'm going to. He, what he most likely did was he probably had cornstarch and milk mixed up so he could thicken the, thicken the gravy. All right. He probably did a good cup of red wine. He probably did a cup of beef broth, right? Or probably beef bouillon and water. And then he threw a steak on and then put it over, and then you mix it into the macaroni. Macaroni, always salt, pepper, garlic, butter, after he cooks the macaroni. So why don't we go ahead and give this a try. Oh, I guess it would help. And of course, olive oil, Athena olive oil. My father got us all hooked on Athena olive oil. So let's see if we can recreate this masterpiece that he came up with years ago. Give us a touch. I'll show you. Looks more than it is. It's about a tablespoon of fat. Once this heats up, we're gonna throw this in because he, he doesn't bother brining, draining, anything. He, he says that this is not blood, it's all the protein. So we just do it exactly how he made it. If that's something you don't wanna do, then you can go ahead and drain it. I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to do this. Just follow my lead. So again, one pound of, of steak strips right here or stew beef, or you could even do a steak. Salt, pepper it, about a teaspoon, a tablespoon of olive oil in making the gravy. Okay, sorry, my sister just texted me. I was trying to figure out what we're doing for tomorrow night. I'm, I'm actually gonna be cooking a uh, Mary Me steak for my sister and her family for um, Christmas Eve dinner. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to make marry me steak. All right. So this looks pretty heated up. All right. We'll go ahead and throw this on. As promised, I told you guys I'd start cooking again. All right. Okay, that, we'll rinse this while that's going. Love this thing. Got an AC more for like 99 cents. My brother's girlfriend at the time used to work there. She had an employee discount. Yeah, I paid like 99 cents for the thing. And it's my favorite cooking utensil I own. 99 cents. Had the thing for years. I refused to part with it. All right. You do a little bit of kosher salt, uh, pepper, if I could find it. I do apologize. We will do some garlic. My father loved his garlic. Uh, let's see here. Where's my black pepper? There it is. Why did I put it in there? All right, black pepper. So 
while we are browning this, and you don't really get to see a lot, and I do apologize, just the way my kitchen's laid out, you know? Let's see if I can, give me one second. It's a little weird, but you're in my kitchen sink. But here you are. It's it's actually kind of perfect. All right, here we go. We'll go ahead. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. All right, I didn't put the black pepper. I mean, to taste, right? Just a sprinkle. Again, I may or may not even post this because I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I'm just trying to recreate something my dad made years ago in college, and if I recreate this, I'm gonna give him a call and say, "Hey, Dad, remember that." That wine gravy thing you make, he's like, yeah, you keep mentioning it. If he even mentions that at all, because I don't even know if he remembers that. But I recreated it. It's amazing. And thank you for coming up with it. Uh, when you come up to visit, maybe uh, New Year's Eve, I'm going to make it for you. Because he loved it. I guess he just wasn't happy how we reacted to it. We, I don't know. Our palettes weren't fully developed back then. At that time... I wanted Wendy's and fries, you know? I didn't want a good gourmet meal. I didn't know what a wine gravy was like. The water's going, so I turned the camera off. Okay, so I got this going for the macaroni. I'm gonna move this over here. Up oh, wrong side. Just wait until it gets a little bit golden brown. And then we're going to save the drippings here because that goes into the gravy. Just like you would a roast beef, right? Basically, that's what this is. The steak strips is roast beef strips. All right. Now, onto the gravy. Very easy to make a roux. I'm sure if you look at my previous videos, I've shown you many times how to do it. There's really no science to it. You can make it as thick or as thin as you want. But essentially what I do is I do about two tablespoons of flour with hold on one second. With about uh, let's see four tablespoons of butter because I want it to be I want it to be a little bit loose so it's easy to mix into the gravy the object of a roux is to keep it from clumping you don't just put flour directly into um, and there's always the question if you sift it or not I followed recipes where they say to sift the flour and I feel like the, the roux and the gravy is just not thick enough I feel like it just makes it, for me, it's the thick, the thickency that I like. I kind of like how that came out. It's the right thickency for me. So, I'm going to make a t-shirt. Me holding a thing of flour with butter. The right thickency. Plus, I'm pretty thick, so there we go. All right, two tablespoons of flour, four tablespoons of butter. Or if you don't like that much butter, if you're not Paula Dean, you can do two tablespoons of flour. Whatever floats your boat. I like mine loose. I like it easy to stir in. Plus, this is one of those kind of dishes where, you know, you kind of want it to be rich in flavor. And you eat a little bit. You put it on your, your macaroni. It's great for a date. Nice Valentine's dinner. Right, so you can turn that off. Use the, the drippings for that. All right, so now maybe it is two tablespoons. My bad. All right, so it's two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of. All right, so here's what roux looks like. You want it nice and loose like this. So, this 
It's the drippings of the meat. Well, I'm only doing two cups. So maybe I won't add any more. Well, you know what? In case it doesn't fit any more. Uh, we're going to turn that way down. It's all to how you like it. It's to your consistency. See, this is a little bit too yellow for me, so I like mine a little bit more opaque. It's a little bit more of a roux. So the first thing you're gonna do, I like to add a little bit of pepper. Just a tiny bit of salt. Okay. To kind of enhance the steak flavor. Alright, the first thing you're going to do, you're going to put this, the heat up a little bit, and then, oh, I guess it would help if I got the wine ready. We're going to reduce the wine first, allow the alcohol to burn out of it. So this is Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a lot smoother in my opinion, I don't, it's not as sweet as a lot of the other wines. It's not as a, uh, it even has a nice uh, savory smell to it. It just smells like it goes good with beef. So here we go. We'll go ahead and cook with this. Stir it in slow. There we go. Allow the alcohol burn out of that and then we're going to do some beef broth or I'm sorry you know how I am beef stock we put beef stock in it Gonna take some of the drippings here. There we go. It's a good thing I have my pajama shirt on. And see how it's quite loose yet. All right, let's see here. Stirring that until it gets thick. I feel like it's a little dark. I don't remember it being this dark. Let me see. He may have had a little milk. He did because of the cornstarch. He did. All right. I'll do that towards the end because milk burns. All right. So we'll allow this to get thick. And the smell is similar. It's close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of rosemary to it. I want to say that he may have. He had rosemary in the house. Not very much came out. It's literally just little floaters on the top. Not even a pinch. Okay. A little bit of rosemary just for some taste. Uh, knowing my father, he probably put some garlic powder in it. It's funny. 
I'm recreating a dish that my father may or may not have thought I appreciated at the time. So even though your kids may not outwardly be out outwardly be amazed by something you made, um, years later they're gonna come back wondering what the heck it was that you did that blew their socks off that they wouldn't give you credit for at the time. And to this day, I'm trying to figure out what it was that he did. All I know is, as of right now, you have to be 21 years or older to have this. Because I wouldn't be able to drive if I had dinner without cooking this all the way through. So, just keep cooking this. Maybe I should bring it to a... Probably should have put a little bit more flour in it. It's not really thickening yet. Probably should have did uh, two to four. I think. I think that's how I realized. I think it's been so. It's been a while since I've been cooking. And you think all this stuff is like concrete in your mind. You forget over time. If you don't do it in a while. All right. So it is starting to thicken. All right. Put about a half a cup of milk in it. It's 2% milk, so, which would have been, I know, what your dad would have used. Yep, exactly. And hey, guys, if this works, try it. I'm telling you, it was good. I'm going to try to recreate this. Oh my god. I think I did it. No freaking way. It does need a little bit more salt. But let's see here. Knowing him, knowing him, he probably put onion powder in it too. So let's do a little onion powder. I mean, it's beef, so of course you're going to use onion. Right? So that was... A half a teaspoon of onion powder that I just dumped in there. I did a sprinkle of garlic powder, salt, pepper, and just enough rosemary to leaf floaters on the top. A cup of wine, a cup of beef broth, a cup of beef stock, four tablespoons of butter, five tablespoons of flour, essentially. Half a cup of milk later on after it gets thick, and it's a masterpiece. Just gotta let it cool, uh, cook off a little bit more. Okay. It's gonna be like a a meat sauce over macaroni. Now, I don't believe in boiling meat in milk. So you can add the milk very last. Get closer. All right. So this is what it looks like. Oh man, I, I must say, it smells amazing. And the other half a pound of butter, or half a, half a stick of butter, is going to go onto the macaroni, salt, pepper, garlic powder. And you pour this like a gravy on top. 
Again, I'm not too impressed how not thick this is. So, in lieu of doing a full four tablespoons of butter in here, I'll do one extra tablespoon of butter for in here, along with two extra tablespoons of flour. All right. Let's get this. It's not thick enough to my liking. All right, here we go. Come out a little bit like a rock. Just gonna hold it away from the heat. This is all. This is almost like my mom's style of roux. See, it's kind of more like a rock. Kind of comes out like this, like a like, like a butter flour patty. That's another way you could do a roux. And what you do is you just kind of stir it in gently for a long period of time. But nonetheless, this is what a roux is. I like mine a little bit more loose. There you go. Plus, it does give a nice little taste to the uh, that buttery, floury kind of taste. It's almost like a little bit of hint of biscuit in it. See, almost immediately, it starts to thicken. As the pot, as the pot thickens, there we go. And honestly, this is how a recipe is born, you guys. I know my father heavily influenced this. I have no idea what portions he did. All I did was re reverse engineer what the tastes were, what I tasted, and then try to recreate what that taste was, and then maybe say, you know, how would this taste with a little bit of horseradish? What do you think this would taste with? Maybe a little bit of Dijon mustard. What would this taste? With a little bit of this and that. And here you have your own recipe. And you guys actually just got to watch me go through this. And if you're really curious, you really want to do this, and you're sitting there taking notes, don't stress. I'll go over the whole thing with you. So what I did was I did, again, a cup of wine, a cup of beef stock, five tablespoons of butter, six Six tablespoons of flour, all right? Salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder. A little bit of rosemary to taste. All of that is to taste. I can't tell you how to do that. I'm gonna say for salt, depending on what kind of salt you have, do like a half a teaspoon. Pepper, same thing, half a teaspoon. I'm gonna do a little bit more as a matter of fact. Just a sprinkle. Cause I like I like pepper. I like it a little bit more peppery. You like red pepper flakes? Throw a little red pepper flakes in there. As a matter of fact, it may taste good with a little bit of Dijon. I'm gonna do that. A little bit. Let's see, where is my Dijon? Great one. Let's see. And before I do that, let me just take a scoop. And I don't really want this at a rapid boil. All right. No. I'm glad I tasted it with a little bit of Dijon. However, the horseradish made it taste good. I did not like the Dijon. I'm glad I didn't put that in there. However, there is a Dijon mustard sauce that you could put in with chicken that would make it good. See, this is going to give it a little bit of a kick. That's about a half a tablespoon right there. Mix that in. I have a nice 
nice meal prep for Monday. Alright, let's chase it again. Aprons off, dish is done. Perfect. For me. So, salt, pepper. Sorry. Hi. It's like... Oh, where's my garlic powder? Where did I put it? There it is. Salt, pepper, garlic. Oh, that's ready. That's for the macaroni. Yes, I call it macaroni, not pasta. For obvious reasons. Put the flour away. Away. experimentation this is better than bouillon roasted garlic bake just gonna take a little bit just to see how it tastes this is how you discover folks yes half to an eighth of a teaspoon it's gonna add a little bit of salt to it like I said, I told you, my father put some kind of bouillon in it. He used beef bouillon, naturally. I don't have beef bouillon. I don't know what happened to it. And every one of our stews that we make in our house, uh, regardless of who's making it, we put some kind of better than bouillon, bouillon base into it. We don't just do straight beef broth or chicken broth, whatever it is. We actually put a um, bouillon into it. And that's what enhances the flavor. I'm back, I put another teaspoon of better than bouillon. Just underneath the surface that I picked from, you actually got to taste that roasted garlic, so. Yeah, oh my gosh. Oh, finally, rapid boil. Glad you could join us. Put salt in it already. Do half the box because there's no way I'm gonna eat that whole thing. Unless I lack the discipline, which I no longer can lack the discipline. Well, how long? How long? 12 minutes after it starts boiling. So it's 2.08 right now. It just started boiling. All right. Start stirring. Let's see if it's still boiling. If it's not yet, then. Okay. It is indeed boiling. good. At the cost of a bottle of wine, broth, steak cubes, flour, butter, and some seasonings, you got yourself what you'd probably pay about a hundred bucks for a plate because it's some kind of gourmet homemade wine sauce at a five-star restaurant, because you're not going to find that at an Applebee's. They're not going to make you a red wine sauce, I can tell you that right now. Especially with a real, real wine. This is One Hope Organic Red Wine. Yeah. But in lieu of drinking it, you know, instead of wasting it or 
I guess you could say I could re-gift it. And I'm going to cook with it and see what I could do with this, you know. And here we have it. I'll see you in a second. I'm going to just boil this out, pour it out, and then we'll test taste it. Or, yeah. See you in a minute. Okay. The three tablespoons of butter, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and a little bit of onion powder. And then I took a scoop of this sauce here, the uh, this gravy here, and I put it inside. So this way here, this takes on some of the flavor. There you have it. Now, take a good scoop of macaroni here. Scoop of this amazing. And there. Now, I was going to put it over a plate because it looks nicer, and that's how restaurants do it. But you want to know what my dad's going to say when I send him a picture? Why don't you put it in a bowl? It's easier. All right, guys. If I don't see you guys before the holidays, happy Merry Christmas and a good New Year. Peace out.